So we have one week. I think. Yeah. So there we go. They're joining in right now. Just going to give them another quick minute. And then we can. Start. <coughs> Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Andres Amayoa. I'm an employment branding intern here at Nestle Purina. Thank you for joining us and welcome to our Nestle Purina Google Hangout. Today we, ha we have with us our Director of Health and Environmental and Safety, Nolan Terry. Uh, he will talk to you about the exciting new entry level. and Purina Facts. I also have with me from our employment brand team, Eric Schmidt, Senior Talent Sourcing Strategies Analyst. He and I will help you um, answer whatever questions you have through our Google chat function. So with that, I'm pleased to introduce Nolan Terry, Director of Health, Environmental, and Safety. Very good, thank you so much. Uh, I am Nolan Terry, uh, Director of Safety, Health, and Environmental Services here at the Nestle Purina Pet Care. And it is certainly my pleasure to have an opportunity to talk to you a little bit today about not only our company, but opportunities that we have within our organization in the safety, health, and environmental arena. Started uh, with this company 22 years ago as a trainee um, and had an opportunity to work in several different areas uh, in our factory and also here at our corporate office in St. Louis. So I'm certainly uh, excited to share a little bit about my journey, uh, as well as the great things that we have to offer here at this particular company in this function. So with that, uh, I wanna go ahead and share the screen here. And uh, we'll walk through just a few slides to, to talk a little bit about the, the company. Uh, I'll really start by talking about uh, the overall Purina organization, our past, our present, and where we're going in the future. Uh, I'll also talk about the job opportunity, the workforce, the opportunity in manufacturing, as well as how to prepare and how to uh, apply for this uh, particular opportunity within our organization. So let's talk about the past. Uh, the Nestle Prina Pecker Company was really founded by William Danforth uh, uh, over 120 years ago. And one of the, the exciting things about the, the company at the time is it introduced dog chow and cat chow, which really extruded technology pet foods, uh, which at the time was, was, was certainly new technology designed to provide uh, food material to animals uh, in, a, in a very consistent way, uh, prepared with, with, with care and also providing all the health and nutrition that they need. In 1986, we really got into adding meat as the number one ingredient to our dry kibbles, which was another innovation that we launched uh, in the late 80s, uh, and also things like extended life studies where we had a 14-year study that really focused on how the, the health effects of feeding products over a long period of time really worked on the animals. Uh, in 1988, we introduced a hyperallergenic formula, which really helped uh, animals with, with uh, food allergies uh, deal better with that particular condition. 
uh, and we've had lots of other innovations that we've that we've uh, had as an organization. In 2001, the company was purchased by the Nestle organization, the largest food and beverage company in the world, uh, and together we've been uh, working uh, hand in hand with the Nestle organization to continue to drive forward in this particular category. Uh, in 2010, we opened a thousand square foot a pet event center here outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we call it Purina Farms, and we host several events there each and every year uh, targeting, um, you know, health uh, or, or targeting animals and, and uh, you know, show, showcasing different breeds. So it's a great facility that we have, and we also have launched our Just Right brand food, which is a, a customized uh, product that we, we tailor for individual animals. When we look at the Nestle organization as a global organization, we operate in over 150 countries. Um, we have presence in, in, in lots of different places. We employ over 330,000 people across the globe, and we produce over 10,000 products uh, that we sell each and every day, each, each and every uh, day. When we look at the Perina business, we have uh, presence in over 70 countries, and we employ over 14,000 uh, associates just in the pet care business. Uh, that is really over $8.4 billion in annual sales just in the Americas. So we have a, a, a lot of product and certainly a lot of, uh, of revenue associated with the growing pet care uh, landscape. When we look at the Nestle Prina in the Americas, we have uh, 16 sales offices just in the, in the US. We operate 20 different facilities uh, here in the U.S., and we have two two headquarters. One actually located here in St. Louis, Missouri, Missouri where we are. Uh, we have another headquarter office located just outside of Toronto, Canada. We have 20 uh, Latin American offices with five uh, factories located in, in in that part of the the globe as well. That's over 10,000 associates in the Perina uh, in Perina in the Americas, uh, which is a pretty substantial footprint in the overall Nestle portfolio. One of the, the nice things about working here at Nestle Perina Pet Care is uh, we have a leadership team uh, that is really very accessible. It's one of the things that I that I have enjoyed over my 22 years with the company is actually having an opportunity to interface and work with these uh, executive leaders within the organization. Um, but it has that small company feel, which uh, which has really I think worked and served us well over the years. And you can see that, uh, that group of leaders here on the screen. When uh, William Danforth started the company, he really founded the company uh, on some very basic principles that he referred to as the talls. And these talls have really lasted and, and really stood the test of time. Uh, we have continued to embrace that as part of the fabric of our organization. Uh, and we have modified them to a certain degree and kind of uh, modernize them, but the talls really do fit nicely with what we do as an organization. And those talls are really stand tall with integrity, smile tall with passion, think tall with expertise, live tall with performance, and create tall with innovation. And each and every day in everything that we do, we really try to live these values. Our message and, and our unified message uh, as to where we are going as, a, as an organization and what we really believe in is really the pets are our passion for us. We really believe that uh, pets enhance the lives of those uh, that care for them, and we are true pet lovers in this organization. Uh, safety, both food safety and employee safety, is a promise that we, we live by, and we are committed to improving uh, in both of those areas which makes it a great company to work for from a safety and health perspective. And progress is our pledge. We are in a never ending pursuit to continue to get better, continue to stay relevant, to stay in front of the, 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 uh, the market uh, and continue to get better as an organization. One of the nice things also about this company is that we compete in lots of different categories. Uh, we certainly are leaders in dry dog and, and, and wet dog. Uh, we compete very strongly in wet cat and dry cat. We also are very competitive in the snacks area. Uh, when you think about strong brands like Begging Strips, T-Bones, 
we also are very competitive and really drive the market in the litter category as well. I hope that uh, you know some of the brands on this list. Uh, you know, we have brands that are out there. I mentioned earlier, Dog Chow and Cat Chow. Uh, we have brands such as ProPlan and Perina One uh, on the dog and cat side. Uh, I hope many of you are familiar with the Beneful brand. That is that is a, a very strong brand for us also. When we think about some of the cat brands, Whisker Lickens, Treats, Friskies, uh, Fancy Feast are some of the strong cat brands that are out there. Uh, and when we think about the litter products, Tidy Cat uh, is a strong brand that really competes very well in the marketplace as well. Now, we think this is a pretty awesome place to work. Um, we are very proud of the awards that we have received over uh, many, many years. But just recently, we were awarded one of the best places to work by Glassdoor. We're also recognized as in 2014 as one of the healthiest places to work by the St. Louis Business Journal uh, and various other awards, including the Malcolm Baldridge Award, which is a uh, one of the highest honors you can receive from a quality perspective. So we really think it's a, a pretty neat to work, a pretty uh, uh, great culture in this organization. Uh, and we're really proud that that, uh, that continues to be shown in the awards that we receive that are usually provided by feedback from our associates as they talk about uh, this particular organization and, and how great it is to work here. We are certainly uh, committed to creating a shared value uh, with over uh, $8 million donated to various charities and organizations, um, you know, certainly related to pet health and advancement of, of, of pet placements and things like that. So we are certainly strong in that area. We are partnered with the United uh, with the United Way of Greater St. Louis, where we've donated uh, over 1.6 million dollars uh, to that charity, and we have a long-standing relationship with that organization. Uh, and unfortunately, the southern part of the United States is is fighting through uh, the Hurricane Matthew that is out there. We are also very active when there are disasters and things like that, where we donate millions of pounds of pet food uh, each and every year uh, to help with pets that are, have been displaced from natural disasters uh, as well as uh, pets that are in shelters across the United States and Canada. It doesn't really just stop there though. We really are very active in, our, in the communities that we work in. Uh, here's an example of what we call Pet Care Pride Day. And this is a dedicated day each and every year where associates, not only here in St. Louis, but associates at each of our factories, uh, dedicate that day and time toward helping in the communities. Things like building dog houses, uh, assembling pet kits, uh, working in dog parks in the area. Uh, there's lots of different activities that we do to try to outreach to the communities that we, that we work in. One of the areas that I'm also very proud of is the person responsible for this is our approach to sustainability. We really do manage uh, to try to reduce the impacts associated with our uh, with the environmental uh, impacts that that uh, that can that can happen as a result of the operations that we work uh, work in and the communities that we work in. Uh, and really, by doing what we do with that is really we try to increase our efficiency. We really try to reduce the amount of waste that is generated. Um, we also work hard to conserve resources. We have some pretty uh, intensive plans to reduce water consumption at our locations. We have an initiative where we are striving to get zero waste to landfill by the year 2020 at all of our manufacturing facilities, and we are on track to deliver against that. Uh, and that is not only a Nestle Purina expectation, but that is Nestle worldwide by 2020 to have zero waste to landfill. So we're really excited about the, the things that we're doing in the environmental sustainability arena. Um, we also work up and down the supply chain to make sure that we are responsibly sourcing ingredients that we're using in our products. Uh, and we continue to, to, to learn and share with environmental organizations and our customers and building strong relationships as we partner together to deliver in this very important area. So when we think about our future um, and where we're headed, 
Uh, we're not just happy with being just one of the voices in the pet care category. We really do work hard to be the, and want to be the undisputed voice in the category. Uh, we recognize the growth of e-commerce and we are developing in that area and we'll continue to dedicate resources to that. We're also working hard to grow in the natural pet and the snacks area uh, of the pet, pet uh, care category. So we're excited about the progress and the new offerings that we have coming in that area. Um, and then just to really remain the best choice and source for consumers to get information um, about products and about overall pet care. So that, that is something that we are striving to do. So when we think about job opportunities uh, in manufacturing specifically, uh, we have several different disciplines that we recruit in. And as I mentioned earlier, I was also a part of this management developmental program, but we have areas uh, in addition to safety and health, we have accounting and engineering, uh, quality assurance production, operations performance. So we have diff several different streams where we bring, uh, as an entry level position, we bring candidates in and develop them from the ground up to become leaders within our organization. It is an entry level program and to just give you a feel for what it looks like, uh, the first six months, uh, of your tenure with the organization is all about building a strong foundation. So in that first six months, you actually get a chance to work inside of the factory, working in all of the different areas of our factory uh, and producing the product. In addition to learning how the product is actually made, you actually get a rotation through all of the back office areas as well, including accounting and uh, engineering and, and, and all of those areas. Uh, and that really does provide that real strong background that will serve you really for the rest of your career. The next six months is really then focused on your area of expertise. So in this case, you spend the next six months working directly with the safety and health uh, department within the location, learning more about how that department functions and what are the key things that you're driving uh, in that area. And then the next 12 months are really about learning how to lead and supervise managing projects uh, and doing those types of things. So as you can see, it's a pretty structured 24 month program, really designed to start with a real strong foundation uh, and then move into increasing levels of responsibility. A few details about the program, uh, the basic requirements and qualifications is to have a Bachelor of Science degree uh, in the safety and health field or industrial hygiene or related areas. And we expect that uh, degree to, to be in hand by June of 2017 with a cumulative GPA of 2.5. The locations for this particular program in 2017 will be, place, will be placing uh, uh, associates in Crete, Nebraska, which is one of our wet manufacturing facilities. Uh, and we will be likely placing in Clinton, Iowa, which is one of our dry facilities that also produces the snacks uh, that I mentioned earlier. We offer this as a certainly a full-time position with competitive salary uh, and the place where you start as a trainee, there's really guaranteed movement after the first couple years in the program with relocation assistance. So just a little bit about the primary responsibilities in the safety and health area. Um, the first responsibility really is, is all about really safety leadership. One of the things I love about this particular function is that each and every day we have an opportunity to go out and work to make the landscape that our employees work in better uh, and to reduce risks. And that's really what we do. We have several different programs that are designed to, to help facilitate that. And many of them really start with the behaviors of people that work uh, in our facilities. And, and really we work hard to develop the leaders of those workers so that they are coaching and helping them grow in this particular area. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have lots of different programs from behavior-based safety programs. Uh, we drive machinery safety programs with our engineering colleagues. Um, we, we drive uh, observation programs, inspection programs. We work a lot with contractors that are on our site working to install new equipment. So we really do work very cross-functionally with the leadership team to drive the, the safety and health programs forward within the organization. Uh, we have two different regulatory agencies that guide and, and provide governance for us. Most of our factories are under the guidance of OSHA. Uh, 
um, and, and our litter factories, which uh, three of them have mining operations. They're under the governance of um, MSHA, the Mining Safety Health uh, Association as well. So um, we also have uh, all of our locations are 18,001 certified. So we do have OSAS 18,001 certification that we maintain at all of our at all of our locations, including here at St. Louis. And this is all about ensuring that there is a robust safety and health system that is maintained and improved uh, that we do. So let's just talk briefly about kind of the career path and what uh, the typical progression looks like. Uh, this example that's shown on the screen is really an example from an HR perspective, but this is really very similar for most of our functions. As I mentioned earlier, the first year is all about this management development program where you're spending that first year in the organization. Typically after that first year, we call it kind of that sophomore, second year area, uh, there's typically uh, a, a promotion where the associates is, is then moved up to the assistant level inside of our organization. Uh, and within that two to three period, we see most of our associates moving up to the assistant manager level. Uh, after that, what would typically happen is they would take on a manager level responsibility, which could exist uh, in our factories or could even exist here in our St. Louis uh, headquarters office. And from there, the next logical position would be a director type level position uh, in the organization. So the hiring process is really very straightforward. Uh, we really have an online application process where we will review resumes and, and take a good look at candidates that meet the qualifications. That's typically followed by a phone screen where we screen down those candidates that make it through that first uh, wave. We then bring those selected candidates on site to one of our locations for a face-to-face -face, uh, interview process where they'll be taken through team interviews. Uh, and during that time, there's, it's a great opportunity to uh, actually tour our site to get a feel for the type of environment that you'll be working in. And then after that uh, process, there's a job offer that is extended with all the uh, details associated with it, including the relocation to the, to the uh, site where the job will be placed. So um, how to prepare. Uh, this is where we get in, in and look at uh, there's some resume writing uh, tools that are out there, behavior-based interviews. There's things that you can look at on our Nestle Printed Careers uh, website that can help you prepare for this process. Uh, it also has career tips and also will help you with some tips about how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. So it's certainly a resource that is at your disposal. We encourage you to certainly take a look at it and use it, but this is the best way to get prepared to, to enter into this process. We also uh, ask you to get connected with us. Um, connect with us on, on all of the social media platforms, uh, including uh, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, at Nestle Printed Careers, uh, Twitter. So there's lots of ways to get connected. We'd love to have you connect with us to, to keep in touch and find out what we're doing. And, and uh, we can certainly stay in contact with you as well. So can we talk about the uh, joining the talent um, community and how that works? Yes, this is uh, Eric again from the employment brand team in Purina. Um, the talent community is a great place for you guys to join a network when you are um, perhaps not exactly ready to apply for a job or the, the exact job that you're looking for um, may not be available at the time. The talent network is a way that we stay engaged with all of our interested and prospective candidates. Um, regardless of, of a job being open at the time. So for sure, if you find interest in Nolan's um, Safety Management Development Program or any of our trainee programs, don't delay, apply to those to the job. But in the event that you are interested in Purina and we don't have a job for you at the time, Talent Network is a great way to stay informed, get news from us and engage with us in an ongoing basis. Very good. So uh, with that, I think we'll uh, entertain any questions that are out there. So
So, do we have any uh, any questions posted so far? Nothing yet. So while we wait for a few questions, should we uh, talk a little bit about the application process or anything anything else we want to cover? Uh, sure, I think Eric, if you want to discuss something. Yeah, I think the big thing for us at, at this point in time is that um, it's getting kind of late in our recruiting season. So if you've got interest in these jobs, uh, don't delay. Uh, the management development program job is designed for a graduating senior, right? So this is different from an internship. We are looking for seniors who will have completed their degree, as Nolan indicated, in 2017. Um, so basically the summer uh, is typically our, our, when our candidates are graduating. But we are doing that recruiting for that position now today and have been doing it since um, about August. So for us, um, you don't want to delay if there's some interest in the role. And you can find the job located on uh, www.nestlepurinacareers.com. Uh, you can search our general jobs. There is also a special landing page specific to management development jobs where you will find no one's job posted. We've got some questions coming in on the chat. We. Um, we might drop off in the video for a little bit, but we are going to keep the line open for at least the next 10 minutes or so. And uh, we'll be around to answer questions for as long as you guys have them. Thanks. So we've got a question uh, from uh, one of our viewers, Lisa, who's curious okay. if human organization performance is part of the SCP Arena organization? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So uh, yeah, that's an area that we're really just getting into. Uh, our, our programs really are designed around behavioral-based uh, activities at this point, but we do recognize that the human performance and the decision-making that goes into uh, working in a factory setting is a big part of, of the injury profiles that we see. And so this is an area that the overall Nestle organization is really transitioning into. Uh, Uh, and ensuring a safer workplace for associates to work in. So, good question. Thank you. Thank you for that one. No, we have a question whether the facilities uh, or this training will be located on New Union or not. And yes. Just a general, not how that works. Yeah. No, that's a, that's another good question. Yeah. So, uh, an example is uh, the two locations that we mentioned in in the discussion earlier. Crete, Nebraska, is a union facility, uh, and the Clinton, Iowa facility is actually not a union. It is a non-union team facility, uh, and, and that's that's pretty much a reflection of our organization. We have several of our factories that uh, operate uh, in a union environment, and we have. Uh, we have nine of those, and the balance of our factories are actually non-union. So we work in both settings. We have great relationships uh, with our unions that are out there, uh, and we also have great relationships with the team-based uh, factories that, that operate a, as well. Um, one of the things that we really try to do in our union um, facilities is really, really do partner with those local business units. And that's one of, once again, one of the nice things about working in safety and health is that it is a great common platform when you're talking about employee safety. So even with our union facilities, we have a common ground in that while we want to keep our associates and our people safe, the union also wants to do that very same thing. And so it really works out quite well. We have really good relationships at, uh, at all of our locations. That's a good question. Sure, 
I don't know if we have gotten this question. I know it's not a common for your particular young professional student, mm -hmm. but we're wondering what the day sort of looks like. And I know this will yeah. change as this person gets developed in a career, but let's say sure. the first three or six months, what would a successful start? Yeah, you know, uh, the uh, in the in, in the early stages of this particular program, the day is really pretty structured. Um, what typically happens is uh, there's a, an assigned area, a bit of a, a, a roadmap, if you will, uh, with the areas that you will be covering. So just an example, in our dry pet food process, we really start with the inbound ingredients that come in. So for the first two weeks, as an example, you'll be working in that unloading area where we're bringing in rail cars and trucks of different materials, and you'll get a chance to see what unloading that those ingredients really look like and some of the challenges that those employees face. Uh, and so it is really very structured in the first, in the first uh, several months of the, of the job. Uh, when you're working in one of those areas, you will then produce a bit of a summary report about your experiences in those areas. And your direct manager will give you feedback to see if you actually captured the key components and the key, the key uh, things in each of the areas that you're going through. As you progress in responsibility, specifically in the safety and health area, uh, the day can change from the day can change very rapidly. There's really no day, two days that are the same. Um, one of the things that you're, you'll be faced with is really working through incidents that have happened. Right. So, uh, an example would be if you're coming into to the the work day and there may have been um, an injury reported. And we'll you know, work with those extended teams to actually launch a detailed investigation to try to get to the root cause of the incident and try to improve our system as a result of, of doing that detailed investigation. Uh, and so really, you know, I say that no two days are the same. That really is one of the things that's uh, pretty neat about this job. There's a lot of routine systems and things that we put in place to manage our safety management system. But as far as your interaction, uh, there's lots of, of, of different ways a single day can go. No, we got a couple of good questions. Okay. Yes, one might be quick and simple. Tell yep. us how to react to assisting employees with acquiring a CSP certification. Yes, we do. And so uh, we are you know, always looking to help associates advance their learning and understanding in, in, in each of the areas and fields that they work in. So we do highly support. Um, certified safety professionals and, uh, and certainly attaining that. And so we have uh, uh, several folks within our organization that have actually uh, done that over the, over the last four or five years. So yeah, we actually do help that one. So that help with that, uh, with that certification. Awesome. And then, um, what is the biggest challenge you face as an organization with changing the safety culture? How do you aim for zero incidents? Yeah, wow. Well, well, that's a that's a that's a really good question. We we have a uh, we we have a we call the journey to zero zero workplace uh, incidents, and um, you know I'm very proud of the fact that uh, in 2015 we reduced our injury rate by 41 percent, and this year we're on track to reduce that injury rate by another 20 percent. And while that is exciting, and I'm very proud of that uh, as the leader of this particular function, uh, we're not satisfied, and we can never allow ourselves to become satisfied because we still have employees that are getting injured. And one of the things we say is that um, it's not just a, a number on a graph or a chart. There's a, a real person behind that injury, and there's a real family behind that person. And so we are continuing to 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 strive towards zero. And that really is what drives our, our team and our organization. And, and we are really supported by our management team to get there. One of the biggest challenges that we face, quite honestly, is we are a high performing culture. And uh, we have a lot of history and tradition around getting results and getting things done. And so many of the injuries that I have a chance to, to investigate, um, I find that it's usually an employee trying to do something good. They were trying to keep the line running 
they were trying to simply uh, keep it from going down, and they take they decided to take a shortcut of some some nature, uh, and so the biggest challenge that we face is our own history in many ways, and creating this culture that allows associates to really understand that it is okay to slow down and think through the situation before engaging. And so we're really working to teach and grow in that area. And as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, that safety leadership is a key component of that. Because just as we cultivated this high performance culture that was about getting work out, we have to also cultivate this high performing safety culture that uh, recognizes that we, we can be safe and efficient together. Awesome. Well, we had a question about lean manufacturing, and uh, I should probably about lean manufacturing. Yes. So, so I yeah, yeah. So we uh, we are actually going down a bit of two different paths on this. Uh, we have, as a Nestle organization, uh, a small pocket focused on really understanding and using the lean methodologies designed to take out unnecessary movements and waste inside processes. Uh, and so we, we do have a small team going down that, that path, but we have a larger team actually moving down the TPM structure. And that is really where we've spent most of, specifically in the Nestle Prina Pet Care business unit, that's where we spent most of our resources. So in this TPM environment, we, it really is about processes empowering workforces to work more autonomously, uh, teaching them to recognize hazards, uh, to put mitigating uh, steps in place to prevent injuries, really working hard in that TPM area to try to drive our operation forward to get to a more high performing culture. Uh, so while we do have this pocket of lean, most of our time and effort right now is being spent on TPM. Yeah, so uh, we, we call the function inside of Nestle the SHE organization, Safety, Health, and Environmental. Uh, and so the way we're currently structured is uh, the safety and health component is at the execution point inside of our facilities separated from the environmental function. So what we will typically have is a safety and health department, and then we have an environmental uh, team or coordinators that actually manage the environmental uh, management system. So those functions are separate at our factory location. Uh, those really still roll up to me uh, as the director of safety, health, and environment. So the strategies and connecting those pieces all together really roll back up at the corporate level, but the execution is indeed separate at our factories today. Any, any other questions? <laughs> And, and I'll just add on to that last one while we, if there's any other questions that come through. Uh, one of the strategies behind keeping those separate um, in our organization uh, is we recognized maybe eight to 10 years ago that there, when we talked about consolidating those two functions together, we recognized that we wanted to truly change our safety culture. And to that end, we decided that it was better to keep the safety component separated from the engineering component and then add more health into the safety piece. So one of the things that we've done is we really try to attack the whole employee, right? So not just the safety system, we really work on the health component as well. It's an area that we really have gotten better in in the last four to five years. We have several different programs within, we call it healthy rewards inside of the Nestle Purina, the larger Nestle organization. We really encourage employees to learn more about their own personal health, and there's incentive programs that we have to uh, to actually take a survey where you understand more about your current sleeping habits and exercise regimens and those type of things, as well as some basic uh, biometric numbers as far as your health, your your blood pressure, your weight, those kind of things. We really encourage 
all of our associates to know more about those numbers. The campaign is actually called Health Rewards, and it was once called Know Your Numbers. And we really believe that connecting that, that health and wellness component to the safety component allows us an opportunity in a, a, a a different type of dialogue with our associates. Um, our current safety program here at Nestle Prina Pet Care is actually we're running a communication platform that's called I Take Care Safety and Health, and it really is about taking care at home, at work, at play, and on the road. So we really talk about all of those different areas because if an associate is getting hurt at you know while they're playing over the weekend, it impacts their ability to work. Uh, and likewise, if they get hurt at work, it impacts their ability to spend time with their families. So we really believe attacking the entire uh, four quadrants of that really it has helped us enter into a more meaningful dialogue with our associates over the last uh, three or four years as we've been running this campaign. Any other questions in the queue? And we're going to get just a couple of more minutes and then we're going to let Nolan get off to his real full time job. Okay. Thank you for joining us. We need these guys to apply, apply for the job. I will say that I've worked in, in a few different functions in my 22 years uh, with the organization. Uh, and I have to say that the uh, this safety and health area is one of the most rewarding areas that I've, I've had a chance to work in. Certainly be, can be some challenging days, um, you know, when you're dealing with a serious injury uh, and, and the impact of that. Also have uh, an opportunity to improve the workplace and to prevent injuries. And uh, we're really excited about the progress that we've, that we've made in that area. And we, we're even more excited about what we're gonna continue to do as we continue to, to, to go down our journey towards zero workplace incidents. I'm just generally speaking, um, some folks are, um, I guess we would just call it the general plans or maybe expanding this problem. In the future, do you think that this will expand to the management. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, we uh, really believe that uh, we will continue to bring on talent um, into the training program. We have uh, opportunities within our organization, and uh, over the last three years, we've been hiring a lot from the outside, uh, and so we recognize that. In order to build a more dynamic bench, um, we really need to develop talent inside the organization. So we've brought this program online, and we certainly have plans of plans of continuing this program and developing uh, professionals in the safety and health area uh, over the next several years to come. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I travel quite a bit. Uh, we have 20 different factories out there. So from my seat uh, there and, and from my direct reports, there is a lot of travel. But in the trainee program, uh, there, isn't a, there isn't a whole lot of travel. The first two years or so is really uh, working at that local factory that you'll be assigned to. And so there are some, some training development things that you would uh, be uh, involved in and uh, perhaps some training opportunities at other sites, other locations within our organization. But as far as heavy travel in this particular role, uh, that really doesn't happen too often unless uh, you're involved in a specific project that requires travel. But as you progress in the organization, as we mentioned earlier, uh, that typical progression from the training program to the assistant level, to the assistant manager level, to the manager level, when you get into the corporate management level, uh, which is really the group that works out of St. Louis, and there is quite a bit of travel. Uh, so my direct reports, my divisional safety managers, uh, all travel about 60% of the time. And uh, and that travel is really, they're out implementing uh, new programs and initiatives. They're working with the local factory teams. We cover these 20 locations uh, uh, that are in the Nestle Print and Pet Care North America portfolio of factories. 
we support all 20 of those from the St. Louis campus. And so uh, my team, they're on the road quite a bit, and uh, uh, I, I am as well. Okay, All right. So thank you, Nolan. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Before you logged off, I'd like to remind everyone that we welcome your application for your knowledge job opening, as well as any other one that may interest you. So time is running out to apply for our management development program, so please don't delay. Visit nasapirinicareers.com for more information uh, and to apply. So thank you again for your time.